spiritual maturity is my topic tonight and i bless god he's going to enlighten the eye of our understanding to comprehend my teaching tonight father take the glory in jesus name we pray amen My topic says spiritual maturity. Let's quickly do it because uh, spiritual maturity has to do with the matured mind of the spiritual man. is different from physical looking matured because many people are with gray hairs but their behavior is so childish. Physically, that is how it is spiritually. Let's read from Luke chapter 2. To direct us on how Jesus Christ behaved so much hurt, more than the grown up parents and with some other people that came for the ceremonies in Jerusalem. Luke chapter 2, verse 46 to 49. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple city, in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. After three days, the parents of Jesus Christ, they came to the temple to look for Jesus because they thought that he was in the midst of the rest folks. But after they are found everywhere, thinking that Jesus Christ was missing, they came back again to the temple where Jesus Christ was in the midst of doctors, both asking them questions and listening to them. Our topic says spiritual maturity. The parents, Joseph and Mary, were not mature spiritually. Jesus Christ was teaching us spiritual maturity. If you hear me say amen. You see, number one, when you are matured in the spirit, you don't go against fathers of faith. You don't preach against them. They do their own, they go. And God has called you into the ministry to do your own, to perform what he has asked you to do. You are called and you have gift and talent. Present your gift and talent. Manifest. But for you to condemn fathers of faith who have been in faith before you came, <laughs> there's a problem. There's a problem with you. If you are spiritually minded, spiritually inclined, then you are matured. The Bible says, book of Romans chapter 8 verse 6. He said, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I pray that you have life and peace to be spiritually matured. Jesus Christ did not go against the elders. He listened to them, then he enlightened them. All the erroneous believe, he enlightened them. He did not condemn them. If you read Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says that Jesus Christ said, the Son of Man did not come to condemn but it came to fulfill the scriptures. So if you are a mature Christian, you don't condemn our fathers of faith. What have they been doing? Somebody came up and said, the tithe are not free. They are sorry. The other one came up in America. The other one, the tithe are not free. He has been preaching it. It's not in true gospel. He's sorry. If, it, if it's your belief, God bless you. <laughs> that I hope is your belief and you didn't believe it again, that's, that's left for you. But don't condemn fathers of faith who have been there before you came. Because everybody are giving different ministry their calling. Many of you that are used to my ministry, the name of our church is Born Again Christian Church. I teach Born Again messages from God. Every other, every other doctrine, let other people be practicing it. But my doctrine God has inspired me to preach to my generation is to get them to know Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. Every other thing, God begins to work on them by himself. My topic says spiritual maturity. Jesus Christ stayed glued to the elders. He was teaching them. He was listening to them, asking questions and asking their questions. Jesus Christ was mature. He didn't condemn the elders. He learned from them. He also encouraged them on their belief. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then let's read verse 47. The Bible says that all that heard him were astonished 
at his understanding and answers. And all that heard him were astonished at its understanding and answers to their questions. They were astonished. They were amazed. They were flabbergasted. They were surprised. Because he did not come to condemn. Be careful on how you condemn other people's messages and establish your own because you are God's child, while the rest are God's children too. You only, the Bible says that we preach only how we can receive, how our eyes can be open. Amen. You preach what you can explain, not what you cannot explain. Praise the Lord. So, for we see through the glass dimly, like First Corinthians 13 said, we see through the glass dimly, but by and by, Jesus Christ shall explain to us how these things are. Amen, somebody. Then verse 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dead with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowfully. <laughs> he said, Mary, the mother, began to question Christ. Why do you suffer us like this? You made us to be looking for you. Let's hear what Christ said. Verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Why are you looking for me? That we yet know that I must be about my father's business. Jesus Christ was doing his father's business. You are supposed to know. We live in the same house. Amen. So you should know where I am. Not looking for me in the football pitch or in the park. I must be about my father's business. If you are matured, every of your thinking is in your father God business. It's in our father God's business. I cannot live one day without thinking about heaven. It's about God's work. About my calling. I must think about it. I must work about it. I must examine myself about it. I must prepare about it to fulfill that call that Jesus Christ has given to me. That was what Christ was asking the parents. Have you forgotten my ministry? Supposed to look for me in the house of God, not in the park. Or in the midst of other people. So if you are a mature Christian, by the grace of God, you don't hurry away from the church. And you don't complain that the hour you spend in the church is too much. You are not mature yet. That is why you are complaining about minutes and hours. Spiritual maturity is my topic tonight. Jesus Christ did not hurry away. The parents did. Because they were not spiritually matured. The parents hurry away and left. But Jesus Christ stayed glued to the to doctors, to the leaders, to the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. He stayed glued to them. Oh, we have spent two hours in the church. Oh, we have spent three hours in the church. Am I encouraging long time in the service? No. But don't let it come out of your mouth. If you come out of your mouth, you are amateur. You are amateur. Put yourself in the role of the minister that is preaching. If you put yourself like that, you cannot say that word. You can't say it. So spiritually minded and spiritual maturity is that you keep quiet there and let people that who are not mature be talking, but side the minister of God. Side it. You don't preach against ministers of God. If you do, you are not matured because you are condemning the cup that is you are drinking from. You are condemning it. Spiritual maturity have to do with that. You are not in a hurry in service. People who come to church late. And they want to go home very early. What is pursuing you from the church of God? You better stay in your home. Spiritual maturity, you stay to the end of the service. Except you have an assignment, not every Sunday, not every Sunday. You always leave the church. You came late, you go early. You came late, you go early. What's your problem? Our topic is spiritual maturity. You don't hurry away from the church. You don't hurry away from the church. And you do not make it a style. To always come late to church. The parents hurried away. Jesus Christ stayed glued to the doctors and the elders of the law. He was listening to them. Then he was correcting their erroneous belief. Amen. He even slept the church for three days before the parents came to see him. The third day, the Bible said on the third day, before the parents could see him in the church, they have suffered looking for him according to their knowledge. But Jesus Christ was sleeping inside the church for three days. How he felt nobody knew. Spiritual maturity. You stay, 
you don't condemn the fathers of faith. You don't come to church late regularly and start to leave the church very early. If you hear me say amen. The Bible says Christ told the parents, you are supposed to know that I'm supposed to be about my father's business and don't look for me anywhere else. Where are we looking for you? You lied, you were living home, you lied, you were going to the church. But now you went to sleep somewhere else. But Jesus Christ stayed glue in the church. He slept church for three days. He never go hunger. He didn't go hungry, but he stayed glue there. Spiritual maturity. Amen. Then, the Bible says, Proverbs 20, verse 19. He said, A tear bearer reveals secrets. You don't reveal secrets when you are having a dispute with somebody. The person told you secret about himself. Then you are quarreling. That very secret is the one you used to laugh at him. Is the one you used to laugh at her. He will be withdrawing secret from you. Whether you are a husband. Whether you are a wife. He told you some secret of himself. During dispute and quarrel. That is when you start saying all those secrets he told you. If you are mature. No matter how, how hard is that quarrel. You don't reveal that secret he told you. You keep it there. So another spiritual maturity is that you don't insult during quarrel. During this with somebody, you don't insult. You decrease, you demand. But who they kill you? You are not a mature Christian. If you are a mature Christian, curses will not be pouring out of your lips. Spiritual maturity. You keep those things. They are no more part of you. They are no more part of you. Warn yourself about it. Learn about it. Grow about it. They are having this boot. The secret you told them, they will be voicing them out. And if you want to tell me that you are like this, you want to tell me that you are like that. So he be he be insulting. Where did you get insult from? If you are a Christian, those insults should not be part of you. Amen. Spiritual maturity. A tear bearer will reveal your secret. So if you are a man of wisdom, you are a woman of wisdom. Proverbs 18, verse 1. He said, A man having separated himself, intermediate himself with wisdom. So you have separated yourself from the worldliness, from our maturity. You mind yourself now about the things of God. Praise the Lord. So another striking word. There was a time that Jesus Christ, you know, was doing evangelism with the disciples. And he met a stubborn demon. That should be Matthew 17, 21. He met a stubborn demon. Our disciples said, we could not cast him out. Why? That demon was stubborn. Jesus Christ said, this kind cannot go but by fasting and prayer. Praise the Lord. So, it is not a mature way of living a Christian life if for seven days there is no one day out for your fasting and prayer. You are spiritually amateur. Don't misinterpret me. Except you are sick. When you are sick and you are on drugs, you are on medications. Then, okay, but seven days cannot pass you if you are a mature Christian. You must discipline yourself to fast at least one day. It can be on a Sunday. Don't eat to go to service. It can be on Sunday out of that seven days. But at least you must make sure that one day escape without eating for seven days. If you are a mature Christian. If you are a mature Christian, fasting and prayer should not go off your page. Maintain your integrity. Let heaven know you that at least one day is recorded in heaven out of the week. Praise the Lord. Spiritual maturity. The next assignment you have to have is that um, how are you matured? If you are, if you went to a Bible college, you don't preach against those who never went to a Bible college. Say, uh, a minister that doesn't go to Bible college, you have nothing to offer. You have nothing to offer. I have seen ministers they didn't go to Bible school. They have large congregations. People went to Bible school. They have few congregations. Amen. I went to a Bible college by the grace of God under the late Archbishop Benson Daosa. I went there to Bible college in All Nations for Christ Bible Institute in Benin City. So I know what I'm talking about. Then, if you didn't, if you didn't attend Bible college, don't condemn those people that went to a Bible school. Say, it's not by going to Bible school. I know I'm called of God. So I know what I'm going to preach. You don't preach like that. You show that you are not matured. When you are matured, follow your call. 
by the grace of God, though I never went to Bible school, but I, I will try to attend. And God is also equipping me. Thank God for those who went. Amen. You thank God for everything like that. But don't condemn those that went and say, it's not bad, it's not bad, I go to Bible school. Then if you went to Bible school as a minister, don't condemn those that did not go. Say, well, I didn't see Bible school. No, I'm not like those who didn't ever go to school. Yes, let them go to school. You don't condemn them. Amen. God gave you a message. He equipped you by himself. He sent to a Bible college. You have the opportunity to go to Bible college. It's okay. But those people that never went and they are moving in faith, they are going on, God is helping them because you are not the one that called them. Let them face God. Let God give them the greatest reward. You want to reward them. Why, why, why did I go to Bible college of my own self? God called me to the ministry, but I have to study what to preach. I have to know the rules and regulations. I have to know the status of the gospel. I have to know the doctrines of Christianity, how it comes about. I have to know where it's coming from. That's why I went to Bible college. And when I got to Bible college, most of the things I was taught there, they mean what, what I knew before. Spiritual maturity. Nobody say custody to himself. What you know, keep it to yourself. If you want to use to preach everywhere, preach everywhere. And don't condemn those who went. Very serious matter. This one has brought problem to the Christian body. Amen? But if you preach against those who went, I also preach against those who never went, then you are not matured. Maintain your lane. Thank God you went, but relax. Tranquilo. Don't make too much noise and condemn those that never went to a Bible college. Maintain your lane. You went, thank God for your life. You didn't go, thank God for your life. But in a reality, brush up yourself. And know where you are not updated. Upgrade yourself. I've seen ministers that never go to Bible college, but if they speak the word because they updated themselves, you know, we have internet now, social media, where different things. You can always go, go, you can always do everything you want to do. They are all in the internet there. So it will help you. Our topic is this, spiritual maturity. Amen. Don't condemn prayer and fasting. If you condemn it, you are not matured as a Christian. Support it. Support the church of God. That it is good to pray and fast. Support it. Don't condemn it. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus Christ said, it is good to fast and pray. This kind cannot go except by prayer and fasting. Know it. And know it for yourself. Know it. You must be matured as a Christian, as a believer. Don't sweep prayer under the carpet. Amen. Don't be fond of insulting people as a, as a Christian, not just a minister, as a Christian. Let those things not be one mission among you. The Bible says, swear not at all. It's in the Bible. Our topic says, spiritual maturity. I pray that with these few words I've given to you today, that God will expand it and increase it in you, so that we can grow thereby as co-believers of Christ. God bless you. Everlasting God, I thank you. That everyone that I'm listening now, we benefit more and more, and this world will become millions in their centurion mind. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.